Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to create MCP server and MCP client using server sent events transport mode. In the previous video, we had seen how to create MCP servers and MCP client using standard IO transport mode. This video will be focused on creation of MCP servers and MCP client using server sent events. In this mode, the MCP server and MCP client, they both run on different processes. And this is the recommended mode when you want to take the MCP server and MCP client to prod. Now let's get our hands dirty and create MCP server with MCP client using SSE transport mode. Also, if you like the content of this channel, be sure to subscribe to it. Let's quickly create our MCP server. We'll add the Maven project and Java 21. And next, we will choose MCP server dependency. And our project is created. Let's quickly take a look at warm.xml. There's a tiny change that we have to do. We have to replace the Spring AI Starter MCP server dependency with the Webflux one. Webflux dependency is required when you want to create an MCP server and client in standard sent events transport mode. Now it's done. And we'll do a Maven update. Let's quickly take a look at the properties file. Here we will declare the server name and the server version. Take a note of the server name that I am giving. This is the same server name that we will give while configuring our MCP client. This time I am going to enable the logging which was disabled when we created the MCP server with standard IO mode. Logging is enabled and I will be running this on port 8040. You can choose whatever port you want. I'm choosing this port to run my MCP server. Let's create a tool now. I will create a service class first. Stock service. The purpose of stock service is to provide the user with the latest stock price given the company name. Now for the sake of the demo, this is going to be a dummy service giving the dummy stock prices. You can very well go ahead and make the real invocations to stock market APIs to fetch the current stock price for the given company name. You can go ahead and make a make use of HTTP client to return the actual stock prices here i'm for the sake of demo i'm just saying if the company name is infosys return that the stock price is rupees 100 valuations are attractive i will copy this and i will have a similar condition for tcs if the user wants to know the stock price of tcs i will say the stock price is 200 valuations are expensive this is the default case when I'm not able to find the relevant company name. I will just say I don't have enough information about this. And we will have to mark this method as a tool. This is important. In the description, I will give get the stock market price for this company. Once again, I am reiterating that this is not the ideal case. In the real scenario, you will be making the real calls to the downstream APIs to return the actual data. Our job is not done yet. We will have to create a bean for the service that we just created. And we will register our tool so that the MCP client can discover it. 
will do with the help of method tool callback provider. Let me add a bean annotation on top of this method. And we are done. Let's quickly take a look at what we just did. We made a simple Spring Boot project with a dependency MCP server webflux. In the properties file, we gave the configuration for server name and server version. Take a look at the server name. This is going to be very important when we will create MCP client. This time we enabled the logging also and we gave server port. Then we created a stock service in which we have a tool which returns the current stock price for a company and it's a dummy implementation. After that, we just registered the tool we just created. Let's create ourselves an MCP client in SSE mode. Maven Nipotency, Java 21 and we will choose Spring Web because we will be exposing an REST endpoint. We will choose MCP client and Olama. Olama is my personal choice as a large language model provider. You can choose any large language model which is available in Spring AI. Let's take a look at the configuration. Here I have Spring Boot Starter Web, MCP Client. MCP Client again I will have to replace to Webflux because I am creating the client in SSE mode and I am using Olama. You can choose, you can replace Olama with uh, let's say OpenAI or any other model that you wish. After this is done, we will focus on the application configurations, the properties file. Here, first I will give my URL for Olama. I'm using Llama 3.2 model. Again, let's say for an example, if you are using OpenAI, then line three and four for you will become the OpenAI URL and OpenAI key. Now I am giving the URL where my server is going to run. When I created my MCP server, I gave the server name as my dash server dot SSE. That same name I have to use over here. And I'm giving the same port 8040. This was the configuration when I made my MCP server. This was my server name and port was 8040. Same thing I'm giving here on line number six. And we are going to enable debugging here also. Debug is enabled and we are good to go. Now let's create a controller which is going to expose an API endpoint for us. And once that API endpoint is hit, we are going to give a prompt to large language model and see whether it can invoke MCP server or not. We have made a basic controller, added rest controller, and we will now be creating a chat client. This particular process is more or less same what we did for when we created MCP client in SSE mode. We will add the dependencies for builder and tool callback provider. Using these two dependencies, we are going to create chat client. Both the dependencies are added now. And now I will create chat client from the builder. Let me write a simple prompt that the large language model should always prioritize information which is present in the context and it should give a short and concise reply. We 
now I'll be adding tools. Default tool callback tools. And now my chat client is ready. After this, I just have to create a get endpoint for me, which is going to expose an API that I can place a request to. This will take a request parameter. For the sake of simplicity, I will be only sending a query. And this query will go into the prompt template. Using this prompt template, I will create a prompt that I will be sending to large language model. Now my prompt is ready and I am going to invoke chat client. Dot prompt prompt. And that's it. If the request contains some data for which the large language model thinks that it can make a call to MCP server, it, it will make a call to MCP server. Let's quickly revisit what we did. We added the dependencies for web, ring MCP web flux and Olama. Then we went into the configuration part. We added the Olama. You are free to choose and switch the large language model provider based on what you want. After the configuration of the large language model, I will configure my SSE connection using the same server name that I used when I created my MCP server. I use the same port number also 8040. And then afterwards, we just made a simple controller, which exposes a get endpoint and makes a call to large language model. Let's go back to MCP server and start the application. I have started my MCP server and in the logs, you will see something interesting. Okay. Now I have the logs with the application up. It says it has registered a tool. Since we have made one tool, it is saying that I have registered one tool. That's good enough because we have registered a tool for stock service. Let's quickly start MCP client also. I have started the MCP client Spring Boot application. And in the console logs, here also we will see something related to Spring AI. It was able to identify and discover the MCP server that we just created. Take a look at the server name and its version number. It will be the same that we had mentioned in the properties file. When the child client will get a request, it will be able to make a call to this MCP server to add more context information. Let's go ahead and test it out. Here I'm passing a query. What is the stock price of TCS? Now let me take you to the MCP server. Over here, we had given the stock price of TCS is 200. So we are expecting a response of the same kind. Let me hit the send button. This request will go to MCP client and the MCP client's large language model is going to decide whether it should make a call to the tool or not. Over here in the application logs of the client, we see it is executing a tool call for get stock price. Now let me take you to the logs of MCP server. This is the application logs for MCP server and it says starting execution of tool, successful execution of tool. And it gave the response also to the client. Once the response reaches the MCP client, 
the large language model adds it to its context and uses that information to give you or generate the response. Here you will see that it is saying that the stock price of TCS is around 200. And that's exactly what we wanted to showcase. That even though this information was not present in the context of large language model, it was able to figure out that for this particular query, it needs to make a call to MCP servers tool and get some additional information. That's what we are seeing here that the stock price is 200. For my case, this response was a dummy one for the sake of demo. You can very well go ahead and add a real HTTP client for yourself, make an actual downstream call and return the actual responses. I hope you really like this video. Thank you. Thanks for watching this video. You can also check out the other videos from this channel.